Hello and for person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing computer simulations when it comes to trying to simulate something absolutely enormous in outer space. And what you see right here is actually one of these simulations I've been using for several years. This is referred to as TNG50, Single Galaxy Formation Simulation, created by something known as the Illustris Project. The project that I've used in a lot of different videos because they create some of the best and some of the most advanced simulations of what possibly happened in the universe for billions of years. But for decades, one of the central missions of computational astrophysics has been actually to recreate our home galaxy, the Milky Way, by using some kind of a supercomputer and by essentially trying to see how it evolves and how it changes over time. But this isn't just about making pretty pictures and pretty videos, it is about testing foundational theories of galactic formation and astrophysics, and of course trying to understand how elements necessary for life, like for example carbon, oxygen and even iron, were initially synthesized and then spread across the galaxy in order to form objects like planet Earth. And this is fundamental for trying to answer the questions in regards to astrobiology and the fundamental questions in regards to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. But the thing is, the Milky Way contains over 100 billion stars, possibly as many as 400 billion. And so it's a spectacular system of stars, interstellar gas, and of course the invisible dark matter, all inside a massive halo. And so trying to simulate this on even the most powerful supercomputer has been a huge challenge. Because in this case we're talking about simulations of everything, including individual stars, in order to see how the galaxy changes and how everything evolves. And so this has been a kind of a holy grail in computational astrophysics. And until recently, this was practically impossible. We just did not have the ways to simulate hundreds of billions of particles in order to reproduce this system. And now we do. In November of 2025, pretty much everything changed because scientists have finally accomplished it. This was a major breakthrough and involved the intersection between high-performance computing with some of the modern machine learning and artificial intelligence advances that allowed scientists to finally simulate this without making the computers explode. And so this is essentially what we're going to be discussing today. We're going to be discussing this Japanese paper on the first ever star-by-star -star simulation of the Milky Way galaxy, an incredible technical achievement that finally broke a critical supercomputer barrier, and of course paved the way for simulations that are even more complex, possibly exceeding previous scales. But before we discuss how exactly this was done, it is still important to understand why this is so difficult. And so in this case it's not really the individual particles, but it's the underlying dynamics of the galaxy that are involved. And that's because here all of these individual billions and billions of particles have to also produce some kind of an interaction on one another. And so we need to model the gravity, we also have to model dark matter and gas, and all of this has to resemble fluid dynamics, which usually govern how interstellar gas behaves. And normally this is done using what's known as N-body smooth particle hydrodynamics, also known as SPH. And this is where we treat stars and dark matter as individual and body particles that have to respond to gravity and have to influence each other. But the gas is modeled using hydrodynamics using SPH particles. But to add to this complexity, this also involves enormous differences in scale. Basically here, this is also a kind of a multi-scale problem. That is because some of these dark matter particles may stretch over 500 to 600,000 light years across, but within this massive volume we also have stars forming molecular clouds somewhere in the center. On top of this, these simulations also have to try to simulate explosions of massive stars that can often produce very hot gas up to about 10 million Kelvin. And so here there's a lot of temperature variation, there's a lot of scale, and there's a lot of different activity. As a matter of fact, many years ago, I used to use the simulation referred to as the Universe Sandbox, and in that simulation even to produce n-body particles in some kind of a very tiny galaxy would basically completely stop my computer. And that would just involve a few thousand particles, not hundreds of billion particles. But it's really these very explosive events and these very dramatic changes such as supernova that are normally the bottlenecks in simulations. Mostly because they usually happen very fast and only last for a few years, but do end up producing important changes inside the galaxy. And so in order to capture some of these impacts, and in order to see how these explosions affect the galaxy, which usually involves injecting crucial energy and a lot of heavy elements into surrounding gas, 
The simulation has to use extremely small time steps in order to see changes in real time. So basically you cannot just skip like a year and expect the simulation to be accurate. But in contrast, the galaxy itself operates on extremely slow time scales. Here for example, a single rotation of a disk will take at least 100 million years. And so in these simulations, if there is a supernova, the entire system suddenly has to slow down in order to account for these very fast, very small events. And this constraint even has the name in computational astrophysics. It's referred to as Koran friedrich liouis condition. So it's a pretty well-known problem. And that means that trying to simulate the evolution of a single star that could take up to 10 billion years may require a lot of individual steps as small as 100 years in order to make this extremely accurate. And so very often this is also referred to as the billion particle barrier. And before 2025, even the most powerful supercomputers were almost limited to using less than 1 billion particles, because otherwise the simulations became extremely inaccurate. And for many simulations using galaxies like this one right here, they had to find some kind of a compromise, very often resolution. Here even the smallest particle is actually size of a massive cluster of stars, sometimes up to 400 million solar masses. I mean from a distance it still looks like a galaxy, but if you were to zoom in, here the pixels would be absolutely huge. You would not be able to distinguish individual stars. But nevertheless, in the last 10 years or so, we did actually have quite a few really important and now famous simulations. And well, again, the most important one is still the Illustris project, a massive series of astrophysical simulations designed to study galactic formation and evolution, but very often trying to focus on the entire universe of approximately 13.8 billion years. And this project spawned a lot of successors and a lot of additional research, and is still going on pretty strongly today. But I guess more importantly, it's all of course absolutely free and available to everyone. Which is of course how I'm able to use these videos. They're essentially on the web. Then more recently we also discussed the EGLE project. Here EGLE stands for Evolution and Assembly of Galaxies in Their Environments. And this was a simulation of an enormous volume of space of 300 million light years, in this case, to some extent finally beating that billion particle barrier. And that's because here they managed to use 7 billion particles that modeled dark matter, gas and star formation, and even effects from exploding stars and supermassive black holes. This was actually a pretty big achievement, and you can learn more about this in one of the videos from a few years back. Then we have some other simulations like the Magneticum simulations, which also try to create structures across cosmological scales, but also try to emulate star formation and chemical evolution from various supernova, and the effects from magnetic fields and black holes. But again, most of these are usually under 1 billion particles and very often involve very low resolutions. And then we have this breakthrough. And so here researchers developed a new scheme that successfully merged some of the conventional physical simulations with deep learning techniques that can use certain types of predictions in order to simulate the galaxy just a little bit faster. And the goal was pretty simple. They wanted to create the first star-by-star -star galactic simulation, basically meaning that the resolution in this case would be one star. Instead of having a cluster or something that's more massive, each little particle would be one of the stars in the Milky Way. And well, to do this, they had to try to create something with at least 300 billion particles. And the key innovation in this case was in trying to avoid the small required time steps associated with supernova explosions. And here they were able to do this by basically first identifying when the star is supposed to go supernova, and instead of forcing the entire simulation to slow down, the affected region of gas or the small cube around the supernova is instead sent to a very small separate specialized computing node referred to as a pool node. So basically it kind of results in its own individual simulation. And this pool node then uses deep learning models, previously trained on high resolution simulations of supernova, in order to predict resulting distribution of gas, density and temperature. And so basically here AI is used to try to simulate these supernova explosions and then return the results. And while these pool nodes are running the AI predictions, the main simulation continues, integrating the rest of the galaxy at its normal, much larger time step. And these AI predictions fully overlap with the main integration, bypassing the short and efficient time steps traditionally required for these supernova events. And so as this predicted data is then returned to the simulation, it allows the galaxy to continue its evolution with all of the materials and energy accounted for. And this method was then rigorously validated, confirming that these models seem to be indistinguishable from other simulations and seem to produce exactly the same results. But this new way delivers a staggering improvement in computational efficiency. 
Now, first of all, this is still not something you can run on your computer, and even my computer that I use for recording is not nearly enough to do any of this, even to replay the results from the simulation. With the initial calculations being done on 7.1 million computer cores, producing 850,000 nodes on supercomputers like Fugaku. And in a typical supercomputer, this would have taken at least 315 hours. And this was just to model 1 million years. And so obviously, in order to simulate 13.8 billion years of Milky Way evolution, it would take almost 500 years. But using this AI surrogate model, they managed to achieve the same performance in approximately 2.7 hours. So basically over 100 times faster, which means that in theory, we could now simulate the entire galaxy in just under 5 years. Now for supercomputers running with a lot of energy, this is still a little bit too long, but at least now it's a lot more feasible. More importantly, we can now simulate at least 1 billion years of Milky Way's history in approximately 115 days. Although at this point, nothing like this has been done yet, and this is right now just the proof of concept, with only a few hours of simulations conducted. But the primary scientific implications here are pretty large. Mostly because we can now combine supercomputers with some of the AI techniques to generate extremely high precision simulations, and more importantly, high resolution simulations, to test theories of galactic structure, stellar evolution, and enrichment in chemical elements across the galaxy. Which physically allows us to trace fundamental processes that at some point in the past obviously produced life on Earth, and allows us to see how chemical elements synthesized in stars spread with supernova explosions across the whole galaxy. And so here we have an ability to resolve these complex, short time scale phenomena like supernova, while also efficiently integrating this into large scale models with long time scale dynamics. Or basically we can actually see what happens on a small scale and on a grand scale, even though previously this was very difficult. And once again, the main achievement here is really these AI predictors that create these individual pool nodes that prevent the simulation from slowing down. But if it's not obvious yet, this is not just about astrophysics and modeling galaxies, because this technique can now be applied to so much more. With the most important application of course being weather. We can now actually use this for very precise weather and climate models that also very often require linking small-scale turbulent processes with large-scale global patterns. In other words, by using these simulations, it can now also become possible to possibly predict things like hurricanes or freak weather events before they actually happen. And so the main point in this work is that it's now possible to integrate some of the previously used AI models that can fundamentally improve supercomputer processing power, moving beyond simple pattern recognition, and actually establishing these deep learning tools as crucial tools for scientific discovery and scientific prediction. And more importantly here, by breaking this billion particle barrier, and achieving a true star-by-star -star resolution, we're essentially entering a new era for virtual universe simulations. Something that can actually finally match true scale of the Milky Way, and can obviously show us what the galaxy might look like in billions of years from today, or what it looked like in the past. But once again, more importantly, this will one day hopefully help us answer questions about why and how life formed on planet Earth, and where else it might be possible in the Milky Way galaxy. Because basically by tracing these chemical elements, we might be able to find some of these answers. Anyway, we'll definitely discuss this more in some of the future videos. Until then, you can check out some of the previous videos on other simulations in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. You can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.